everybody, I'm Joshua. And I'm Caleb. And we're brothers, not sisters. Guys, we're sorry we haven't had uh, any new episodes for a while. We've been busy working on an amazing series for our Jewish roots called Jeremiah, Hope Over the Horizon. I'm all about the shameless self-promotion, guys. Uh, that's why we're here from ministry. It's, 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 it's amazing. Uh, in this series, Dr. Jeffrey Seif brings you Jeremiah, key moments in his life and prophecies that parallel what we're dealing with in today. You know, the struggles that our society is facing. Uh, you would be surprised at how the situation very closely aligns with them, you know? So you're saying that parallel prophecies isn't just a tongue twister, it's real life. No, it, it, it happened. Um, Jeremiah, he was uh, a prophet. He became a prophet at a young age when he was just a youth. Um, and he immediately pro started prophesying doom and destruction. You know, it was not, it must have been super not, popular. not popular, uh, <laughs> though he was accepted in the reign of King Josiah, who has already tried to reform uh, for the people, especially when they found the book of the law. Uh, but eventually, guess what? Jeremiah's prophecies came true. And here comes kingdom of Babylon that wiped out the, the land of Judah and they were taken into exile. But we, we don't want to focus on all the stuff that Dr. Seif is going to talk about in his series. We really want to focus on the end of Jeremiah's life. And so, uh, guys, he was a prophet for 40 plus years. Wow. He had a very long tenure as being a prophet. And, he, and most of them didn't last that long. <laughs> most of them were killed very quickly. Uh, and he was not very beloved by his own family. He was rejected from his family. Uh, they, they literally sent assassins out to kill him. Wow, you thought you had family problems. Uh, kings were always trying to kill him. He, he saw kings rise and fall. The religious leaders hated them. They captured him. They whipped him. They beat him. They put, they put him in stocks. Uh, he did not have a good time. He was thrown in prison over wow. and over again, uh, nearly to the point of death. And it's very interesting when uh, the Babylonians finally come to besiege Jerusalem. And he's in pit, prison. Mm. And it's so bad in Jerusalem, people are eating their own children in the streets. It's, it's utter chaos of what's going on. Then God finally gives them a good prophecy, God, talking man. about the Messiah coming and they're gonna come back from the land after 70 years and there's hope over the horizon. So uh, people That's probably didn't believe him at that horizon. point either. So he, he never got a break, the poor guy never got a break. Wow. But eventually, yeah, Nebuchadnezzar destroyed Jerusalem, destroyed the temple. And when he saw Jeremiah in prison, he, got, he pulled him out and he said, you're the guy you're the guy whose prophecies came true. You're the guy who prophesied in the name of the Lord, just like Daniel. I remember his God. Oh, wow. You serve the same God. He let Jeremiah and Baruch go free. And so just to carry on the story to set it up, um, there's a remnant of Jews that were allowed to stay in the land under Governor Gedalia, but the people still would not listen. They, after they saw all the destruction that happened, uh, all of Jeremiah's prophecies come true. They still don't believe him when he says, don't rebel against the Babylonians. They assassinated Governor Gedalia. And fearing the reprisal from Nebuchadnezzar, they kidnapped Jeremiah and Baruch and took him all the way to Egypt. Oh, thanks. That's, that's fun, guys. And so that's where our story picks up with the last known prophecy of Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 44, when uh, God's revealing the intentions of their heart and all the secret sins they're still carrying out. Uh, it's, it's a terrible story. Jeremiah 44, 1 through 10. The word came to Jeremiah concerning all the Jews living in Lower Egypt, in Migdal, Tophanes, and Memphis, and in Upper Egypt. That is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. You saw the great disaster I brought on Jerusalem and on all the towns of Judah. Today they lie deserted and in ruins because of the evil they have done. They aroused my anger by burning incense to and worshiping other gods that they neither nor you nor your ancestors ever knew. Again and again I sent my servants the prophets who said, do not do this detestable thing that I hate. But they did not listen or pay attention. They did not turn from their wickedness or stop burning incense to other gods. Therefore my fierce anger was poured out and it raged against the towns of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem and made them desolate ruins they are today. Now this is what the Lord God Almighty, the God of Israel says, why bring such a great disaster on yourselves by cutting off from Judah the men and women, the children and infants, and so leave yourselves without a remnant? Why arouse my anger with what your hands have made, burning incense to other gods in Egypt, where you have come to live? You will destroy yourselves and make yourselves a curse and an object of reproach among the nations of the earth. Now that was really wordy, guys, but basically God was warning them, you didn't repent. You didn't repent. This is where things turn south, Josh, in the story. Uh, they were exposed 
for their wickedness. And instead of owning up to the bad things they did, uh, they acted just like their ancestors, who when they came out of Egypt, they were complaining. Uh, ten times they disobeyed God in the wilderness after they saw his miracles, his signs, his wonders, the Red Sea parted. And instead, after seeing God judge them, to humble their hearts to repentance, instead they stick their finger in his face, they shake their fist, mm. and they say, guess what we're going to do, God? And that's where Jeremiah 44, never, 15 through 18 shows up. Never good, by the way. No, no. <laughs> Jeremiah 44, 15 through 18, Then all the men who knew that their wives were burning incense to other gods, along with all the women who were present, a large assembly, and all the people living in Lower and Upper Egypt, said to Jeremiah, We will not listen to the message that you have spoken to us in the name of the Lord. We will certainly do everything we said we would. We will burn incense to the Queen of Heaven and will pour out drink offerings to her, just as we and our ancestors, our kings, and our officials did in the towns of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. At the time we had plenty of food and we were well off and suffered no harm. But ever since we stopped burning incense to the Queen of Heaven and pouring out drink offerings to her, we have had nothing and have been uh, perishing by sword and famine. Ugh. The, the Queen of Heaven, Ashtaroth, Ishtar, uh, Astarte, the name of this female deity they were worshiping, uh, the defiance they showed against God. God had no choice but to finally issue judgment on these people uh, once and for all. Jeremiah 44, 24 through 28. Then Jeremiah said to all the people, including the women, hear the word of the Lord, all you people of Judah and Egypt. Go ahead then, do what you promised, keep your vows, but hear the word of the Lord, all you Jews living in Egypt. I swear by my great name, says the Lord, that no one from Judah living anywhere in Egypt will ever again invoke my name or swear as surely as the sovereign Lord lives, for I am watching over them for harm, not for good. The Jews in Egypt will perish by sword and famine until they are all destroyed. Those who escape the sword and return to the land of Judah from Egypt will be very few. And the whole remnant of Judah who came to live in Egypt will know whose word will stand, mine or theirs. Wow, so then Jeremiah gives a sign, so this is a sign that the word's Lord is true. Nebuchadnezzar's coming. He's finally going to get the prize he's been hoping for, fighting Egypt all these years. He's going to claim Egypt as his prize. He's going to defeat Pharaoh Hophra, and then he's going to kill all of you. And that was after Jeremiah Super said that. Super uplifting, man. After Jeremiah says that all we have is uh, ancient Hebrew writings that continue what happened after that point. Um, what we know is the people rose up, uh, and, and they stoned Jeremiah to death. They stoned him. You may ask, how do we know? You know, after all this writing, well, Baruch chronicled Jeremiah's writings. He obviously got away. Uh, the Lord always promised that Baruch would get away with his life as a prize, but Jeremiah was not so lucky, and it's because he followed the Lord's commands. And so you may say, what was this whole story? What does it have to do with us today? And that everything with us today, because we are the church now, just like those people, the Jewish people were God's people, and we have fallen into the same sins of the world. And we have shamelessly adopted the world's culture into the church, following after all the gods, all the idols, all the things. And I don't even need to go and tell you all the different descriptions of, oh, you're doing this, you're doing this wrong. You know, we all know what's wrong because we all have the Holy Spirit that convicts us uh, according to uh, what is right and what is wrong. And so the call is simply to repent, guys. Uh, just as Jeremiah called uh, them to repent before destruction is coming, I believe judgment is coming uh, to the church of God. I think we have an opportunity, though, a, a, a reprieve, a moment. Good things are uh, are coming on the way. Uh, you've heard of a news story that uh, Roe versus Wade may be turned over. I believe if you saw our abortion episode that that place, uh, the shedding of innocent blood placed our land under a curse, and we can have that curse removed. And when we have that opportunity, we can cry out to God. We can seek the Lord while he may be found. We can have a revival, a great awakening if we repent, if we turn from our ways. So let's humble ourselves. And right yeah. now, I just want to lead us in a prayer. Okay. Uh, I want you all guys at home as you watch this to believe with me mm. uh, for the repentance for our nation yeah. as a whole and for the individuals that will turn back to him. That's right. Yeah. So dear Heavenly Father, we just, we, we love you and we realize that the trap of the enemy is mm. to get us focused on herself, to get us living to our own fleshly desires. And we know that the flesh Lord God, those desires lead ultimately to death. Mm. And so we repent of our ways. We repent where we failed you. Mm. We repent where we have given into our selfishness mm. and to uh, the things that we find comfortable, the things that we enjoy. Mm. And we ask on behalf of our nation, Lord God, that for the repentance uh, from you for these sins that we've committed, Lord God, for, for casting your name out of our schools, mm. for uh, endorsing, Lord God, all the different things that this country has done mm. against your name. 
name. We ask that you would once again, Lord God, bring repentance to your people, Lord God, and that you would take the curse and use this nation for good, for the reason that you founded it, Lord God, the founding fathers committed to you, that we will once again have that opportunity, Lord, to be a nation that is upheld by your values and your standards. Mm -hmm. We just pray that you move on the hearts of everyone watching, everyone listening, that they would repent for their ways and turn and put their focus on you. Mm -hmm. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Amen. We love you guys. Thank you for watching. Join us next time. Check out the new series. Jeremiah, hope over the horizon. Over. Coming to a TV near you. It hopes over the horizon. Hope's over the horizon. Not hope floats, that's a different movie, I think.